Happy June, can you believe it? We've been in our COVID-19 situation here for over 90 days now. And I wanted to put this video together to give you a quick update as far as what's going on in May of 2020, what happened in May of 2020. And I'm gonna compare May of 2020 with May of 2019, but I'm also gonna compare the year over year stats as well so you can see what's going on. So please stay tuned so you get the best information. following my page on Facebook, you've been seeing the stats I've been putting out and the stats are quite incredible. And I was listening to WTOP, our uh, DC area uh, news radio station, and they were talking about how Bright MLS, which is our MLS, was reporting that the DC area is seeing a real slump in sales and a real slump in pendings. And a lot of us interpret that to be the truth in our area. But I'm telling you, it is far from the truth. Fredericksburg area, which includes Stafford, Spotsylvania, King George, Fredericksburg City, Caroline County, and Orange County, we are experiencing something like no other market is experiencing it right now. And so my job is to give you the facts, not the feelings, but the facts, so you can see what's going on and make plans accordingly, or just feel more comfortable with the investments that you have made in the past. So May over May, uh, 2020 compared to 2019, our inventory is really low. We have less than a thousand houses on the market right now. This time last year, we had over 1,700 homes available on the market. So inventory is down. Now we all know when there's less to buy, people can't buy as much. So sales are probably gonna be down. So keep that in perspective. Sales are not down because demand is down. Sales are down because there are significantly fewer homes available to buy. So of course the sales are gonna be down. However, our number of pendings is up over last year by 14%. So our inventory number is down but there are more homes under contract this year compared to last year by 14%. So that tells me demand is amazing right now. Last year at this time, there were a total of 1,200 homes under contract. So those contracts might've been written in March or April and they were still under contract in May, but there were 849 new contracts written in May of last year in May of this year, 971 contracts were written in the month. And this month was a record breaker. And I will get into that a little bit later. There were 621 homes that sold in May of this year and 661 sold last year. So the difference is about six and a half percent. But with our inventory being down substantially for our actual number of sold homes to be only down 6%, that is incredible. The average sales price is up 6.6% over this time last year. Average price right now is just under $340,000. Average price last year was $318,000. And it's happening, uh, selling a home is happening quicker. On average, it's taking 29 days, whereas last year it was 32 days in the month of May. But let's put the whole thing into perspective. So we could have a really robust month and then we could have had things that happened last year in the month that caused issues. So I think looking at year over year stats is gonna be really important. So in 2020, um, up to the end of May, we had 4,137 homes come on the market. That is 12% less than we had uh, in the first five months of the year last year. So inventory is down only 12.2%. Um, our pendings are basically stagnant. So we had about 3,500 homes go under contract so far this year and about 3,500 so far last year. The number of sold properties this year is up over last year, the actual number. So we sold about 2,700 homes this year since January 1st. 
through May 31st. Those are the number of homes that have closed. Last year, it was just 2,500 homes. So we sold about 200 more homes so far this year than last year. And the average price has gone up 7.6% and the amount of time to sell a home has gone down. So, so far this year on average, it's been about 39 days to sell a home. Remember that's January through May. And last year, same period of time, it was 46 days. So everything is looking better. Um, inventory is down, but the demand is still there. The sales are still there. The time on market is still there. The value is still there. Prices are going up. So what that tells me is that demand curve has pretty much stayed the same year over year. As a matter of fact, demand has increased this year. And with inventory being lower, we all know supply and demand that drives the prices up. So that is why the home values are going up over last year. It is not because we're having a boom. It's simply because of supply and demand. So I want to talk about how this compares to the record breaking month before us. And that was May of 2005. Now the home price peaked in 2006, but May of 2005 was the month where things were going nuts, okay? In May of 2005, there were over 1,000 homes for sale. We have less than 1,000 homes for sale. In May of 2005, 797 contracts were written. We wrote 971. This is the most number of contracts written in a single month in our marketplace ever. Ever since we've been able to have stats in a online MLS. Of course, we don't know the stats when the MLS was a book, but 971 homes went under contract. May of 2005, which was the peak of that crazy uh, boom market, was less than 800. This is amazing. The number of homes sold in May of 2005 was 715. So that's about 100 more than we sold this year. But remember, that's because those contracts were written in March and April, and we were just getting into COVID-19 in March and April. So that will probably be exceeded in July, I'm expecting. And the average sold price back in 2005 was 323000 and we exceeded that this year. I didn't do days on market because days on market back in 2005 was like, you didn't even get the house on the market and it was selling. So that is a unique piece of data that I'm just not going to share here because that environment really doesn't compare to the environment we're in right now. So this is all good and good information and it makes you feel very confident in your investment has gone up in value and we have little inventory and a lot of demand but i do want to make sure you understand we still do have three micro markets in our marketplace and that is based on price point so we're not seeing a seller's market in price ranges above six hundred thousand so if your home's value is 600 or below, you are experiencing a seller's market. A seller has the upper hand in negotiations. You may receive multiple offers. Buyers are in competition and everyone needs to work with a professional agent to help navigate through that. Buyers need buyer agents to help them navigate and compete in a multiple offer environment. Sellers need agents to make sure they're exposing the home to the proper folks giving them good advice on which offer to accept and managing the fact that there are multiple offers followed on by all the inspections and the deadlines and all the things that come about. So it's very important even in the seller's market to have a professional represent you. In the 600 to 800 price point, it is a neutral market. What that means is supply and demand are pretty much equal. There's about a five month supply on the market. And so that means the current number of homes on the market, it will take about five months for all of those homes to sell if demand stays the same and no more homes come on the market. And then above 800,000, it is a buyer's market. So what does this indicate to me? It indicates now is the time to move up if you're thinking about buying a more expensive home or a bigger home or a home in a different location that costs more money than the home that you're in right now, this would be a great opportunity, especially if your home that you would need to sell is under 600,000 and the home you want to buy is above 600,000. Interest rates are extremely low. I can not 100% guarantee, but 
pretty much guarantee you I'll be able to sell your home in order to buy the next one. And there's plenty of inventory to choose from. So a great opportunity to move up. The other thing I want to talk about in predictions is adapting. So how did all this happen? It's because professional real estate agents adapted how they go about marketing homes and doing business with their clients. Back in March, we had no clue what was gonna happen. And we quickly had to work on adapting how we list homes, how we market homes, how we show homes, how we bring buyers into homes, how we even drive to show the houses. And so the agents that have adapted to this environment are doing well. And we as a team are doing amazing. We are actually having our best year ever in this current market and helping more clients than ever before. And that's because Quickly, we adapted at the very beginning. We continue to adapt as the environment changes and as the demands change and as the market ebbs and flows change. Uh, but the fact that we adapted um, has helped us and helped our clients tremendously. Looking into the future, there are two things that I don't know the answers to. And I'm gonna be interested to see what actually happens. And that is traditionally in our area, in the Fredericksburg area, July and August are the slowest real estate months of the year. And when I say slowest months, what I mean is those are the two months where there are the least number of people out looking to buy homes. You will hear on WTOP and uh, radio stations and in the newspaper and the National Association of Realtor Report that July saw the most number of homes sell. Well, just to remind you, when a home closes, the buying decision was actually made one or two months before that. So July and August, typically in our market area, are the two months where the fewest number of buying decisions are made. And I'll put that out there. But what I don't know what's going to happen is what's going to happen in our marketplace in those two months. I had no way of predicting that this is how our market was going to respond to COVID-19. One thing I am aware of is the Northern Virginia market has not really been doing as well as we are, but Northern Virginia is also a more highly densely populated area. And my thought is a number of the people who live up in Northern Virginia are going to be sick and tired of not having space, not having room, not having a home office, not having a space to go outside and privately enjoy. And so they are going to be looking at coming down here. The prediction is for that market in Northern Virginia to start making adjustments in July and August. And I think when that starts to happen, it's going to trickle down to even more demand in our area. Or we could just be a regular July and August and not really have much going on. So I'll be interested to see what happens in those two months. The other thing that's coming up, and I talked about this at the beginning of the year in my predictions, my bold predictions report for 2020, is we do have this big thing happening in November, and that is a presidential election. And every four years when we have a presidential election, no matter who is running, no matter who is up in the polls, no matter what side of the aisle you guys are on or these people are on, a presidential election has an impact on consumer confidence and consumer confidence has a major impact on whether people buy or sell houses. So I still believe we are going to have a real impact on our marketplace come September, October because of the presidential election. I also believe there's only one thing that can make up for that in our area, and that is a flight of people coming down from Northern Virginia at that time. But I think the presidential election is going to cause things to slow down in our area in general. And so my thought is if you need to sell or if you want to sell or you want to move up, getting your home sold before September is going to be really important. So if you or someone you know need to make a move this year, now is the time for us to get together. So please reach out, 
Let's schedule an appointment. We can talk about a strategy looking forward into going into July, August, or before the presidential election. Or if you're thinking about selling your home, maybe in a year or two, and you're thinking about doing some home improvement projects, let's get together and talk about those. I know which projects will give you the biggest return on your investment, and I don't want you to waste any money. So schedule an appointment, get with me, and we will take very good care of you. Hope you have a great rest of your June, and I'll see you in July.